Welcome back, everyone. Uh, in this uh, next clip, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, introducing how to represent or how to um, implement a graph using PyTorch and uh, NetworkX. NetworkX is a very well um, known library in Python for representation of graphs, and it's very profitable, especially to plot them and structure them. So, in today's um, clip, we are going to focus in on um, implementing our first graph graph in this code, right? Since we are doing uh, graph neural networks, it's good to know how to implement a graph. So first of all, in the first cell of my code, you're going to see that I am installing um, the mean, the mean, uh, the mean libraries I'm going to be using in this, in this um, clip. So in this case, it's basically PyTorch and PyTorch Geometric. And this is important to mention because PyTorch Geometric is actually the uh, implementation in PyTorch for uh, graph neural networks. So if you get deeper and deeper in graph neural networks, you are going to become much, a lot of familiarity. You're going to get a lot of familiarity with a torch geometry, right? And then Network X was already installed in my machine. So uh, in the machine I was using for this course, and uh, I didn't have to, right? But um, since this machine is relatively new, I didn't have a torch geometry just yet. So I installed that. Just a note, and the reason I did that in this way is because I wanted to walk you through some of the major pitfalls I I made myself and some friends as well. Is when you install uh, PyTorch, um, be careful about how you install it. Right, depending on the machine where you're going to be running that, uh, you have to be very careful and indicate the actual type of uh, hardware support. If you're CPU, GPU, or um, something else right and the reason i'm mentioning that is because if you don't do that wrong if you do that wrong you will need to restart, restart your installation again so as a warning be sure that you implement you are importing and installing your libraries especially in the pytorch uh, case uh, properly to work uh, properly in your machine with that said let's go to the actual code of our um, implementation so first of all of course we have the imports of the of the libraries that we are going to be using today uh, we're going to be install uh, importing pytorch pytorch geometric um, and so on and then we're going to be using network x for um for uh, structuring or building up the actual graph right let's define the graph this is a very simple graph we are going to be using a four nodes graph so just for the purpose of example, I think it's better to have a to keep the graph very small so we can control um, what we are doing, right? And then we are going to define the edge list. So basically, the edges between nodes. We do that with a, a tensor, a, a, tens, a PyTorch tensor, right? And it's a very very different uh, than you may expect. So initially, when I talk about edges, right, you can think or you can define an edge as a a pair between the identifiers or the IDs of the two nodes that they are connected, right? So you can think of a of a of a definition of an edge of, of the edges as a list of tuples, right? However, in PyTorch, especially when we want to use it within Network X, you, you need to follow a different uh, approach. You need to follow what is called source and target node. So basically, you are going to pass two lists, right? That define the edges, but in the in the following way. So the first position in the first in the first list, the source nodes, identifies what node you are starting with, and then to know where the edge goes to, right? You have to check the first position in the target node. So, in my example, for example, right, you have that node zero goes connects to node one, and then you see that node zero also connects to node two, node zero connects to node three. Node one connects to node zero. So remember, if we are doing an undirect graph, not a direct graph, we need to define both directions are, are valid because if not, you are basically defining a direct graph. So in this case, we are saying that one is connected with zero, two, two with zero, and then two and three, three and two. Remember, we are doing undirectional, and then three and zero also to close the loop with the previous definition. So when we run this, basically this is going to create our list of edges, right? Then as I introduced briefly, right? Um, at the end of the day, every node has information, could have information, right? This is defined in the 
node features. So in this case, we are generating, let's say, a number of six features per node. So in every node, we are going to embed um, a, a feature vector. Uh, we are using here random numbers. It doesn't mean anything. It's just for the purpose of the example. Right? It could be just an scalar value, right? You can just provide one value, an scalar, and that could be also the feature, right? Or it could be a much, much, much larger uh, vector of feature, right? Imagine that a node represents a human, right? Or a person, right? You may want to embed on that node all the information of that human being, like uh, height, the weight, um, age, uh, color of the hair, all the information, all that tabular information can be stored as a node, as a feature of the, of the features of the node. Right. And then just to make the, the example a bit more uh, complete. And as we see, that's also important to understand, uh, to, to, to apply some of the knowledge we we taught in part three. Right. Um, you can assign information to the edges. In this code, um, we can actually define uh, the weight for the edges. You can think about the weight as a potential importance of that edge uh, between two nodes. Right. And as you uh, you may remember from part three um, class video, we talk about that in some of the um, graph uh, filtering and graph pulling operations, this information is used if it exists, right? So just for the purpose of the example, and just to connect the dots between the theoretical and the practical uh, part of uh, graph neural networks, let's define some weight for the for the edges of our node, right? And in this case, you can even define for the same H you think in an undirectional um, graph, you can define different weights, right? That nothing nothing uh, prevent us to do that. And that maybe it's important if you are thinking a multi-dimensional graph, right? When you have uh, edges of different type of edges, right? So moving forward, right? Um, basically here we are using data, data um, function from uh, from uh, PyTorch. That data comes from uh, Torch Geometric, as I mentioned to you, the library that uh, PyTorch offers us for uh, graph neural networks. And let us define the object that stores the information of, of the graph, right? We pass the, the features of every node, the list of edges, and then we can assign, if we want, a set of attributes to that, those edges, let's say the edge weight or the edge importance. Then, of course, we are going to print some information that we store on that data structure, right? That represents our graph, and just to see how that graph actually is actually um, pictorially represented, we are going to plot it, right? And we are going to see that that graph follows the definitions we were defining in our edge list, as well as the weights. So let's run this cell for a second. Takes a few seconds in my machine. Just forget about the complaint from this for touch, uh, touch sensor. It's nothing important for the purpose of the video. But then, as you can see, as I said to you, we have four nodes. We have a total of H, eight edges because we are doing um, um, they're both directional, so we are doing undirectional graphs. So for every two nodes, we have actually we have to find two edges, right? Two to zero, zero to two. Let me go up just to remember what we did here: zero to two, two to zero, right? And then basically you are going to see, right? This the number of features per node is six. We already know that. And the number of weights per edge is one. So we can assign one weight or a vector of weights. So, and this is basically the pictorial representation of the graph that we just construct or just build up using PyTorch um, capabilities, right? And as we will see in future videos, uh, we are going to use this type of uh, construction um, quite frequently, right? Because it's uh, PyTorch uh, geometric is. Uh, is the way to go in in or for me is one of my favorite libraries to implement uh, graph neural networks. So with this, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I highly recommend that you try yourself or even try to build up new graphs and play around, especially because there are some parts of of the construction that are not intuitive. In, I and I agree. For example, the definition of edges 
in PyTorch are not super intuitive. So just become familiar with that. Uh, just remember that um, we can assign features to the nodes as well as we can assign information to the weights, sorry, to the edges, right? And then once we have all the information, we can actually build up such data structure that PyTorch offer us to, PyTorch Geometric offer us to store our graph information, right? And then we can actually extract that, that information as we need moving forward using different type of um, variables that the data structure offers. With that said, thank you so much to, um, to stay with me today in this uh, code tutorial where uh, we um, just learn how to build up a graph using PyTorch and see his, his pictorial presentation using networkings. Thank you.